Right. So this is what we have been doing. So next step is after you have initialized, after you have uh, created uh, or rather created a file and you have added the file, then you have committed the file. Uh, but still everything is in your local. Uh, there's no connection. So what we need to set this connection between your local folder and your GitHub repository. And that is what we're going to do next. This is what this is a step to do that. And this is also mentioned when you go and create the repository, it's mentioned here that you need to add a remote repository whose name is this. So this actually represents this URL. So when you want to represent this, when you want to access this URL, you're going to use the word origin. So I'm, I'm going to initialize this. I'm going to write git remote add origin, okay? So I'll write git remote add origin. Uh, let me see if I can copy and paste this because previously it was not working. Oops, okay. So I think I have to type it out, https github.com. You won't have to do this because I'm on a virtual machine. So it is having some copy paste issues, but you will have, uh, you will have to just copy and paste, that's it. Akash TK Tyagi demo dot kit repo dot kit, right? Git https github.com tkash tk tyagi demo dot hyphen git hyphen repo dot git, right? And that's it. So then I do this, it will not say anything. It will say okay. If it is not saying anything, it means it has executed that command without an error. Uh, the next step, last step is now, that means it is in sync. Now the sync has been done. That means now whatever I do next to, in order to push my file to this repository, uh, it will directly go to this specific repository. So the command which I'm going to write is, I'll say git push origin. You remember I talked about this origin because I'm saying I whatever changes I have added and whatever changes I have committed, I now want to push them. So it is a three step process eventually. And the first step is you add it. Second step, you commit it. And third step it is your push it. Now, when you say push, you need to specify in what repository you want to push and in what branch you want to push, right? So when I say origin, this refers to this URL. That's what I've done in the previous step. I said, get remote add origin this represents this repository, right? So that's what I'm writing. I'm writing git push origin, which means this repository. That means I want to push to this repository, all the changes which I've added previously and to this branch. But right now my branch is master. So I'm going to say git push origin master. Then it will ask me for my username. I'm going to write my username like this and will ask me for the password. You have to enter your password. And the moment you do that, it will push it. It's now saying that it has tried enumerating it, counting it and all the blah, blah things. And eventually it's saying that I have created a new branch and that branch is mapped with your local master to the repository master, right? If I go here and just uh, refresh this, you're going to see the code which I've added previously, right? You remember I added this readme.md.txt. So I open it, this is my command. So this is my text which I added here. And then this is my, my uh, comment which I gave uh, when I actually committed it, right? Let's make a few more things. Let's make some changes here. So now what I'll do is I will go here and I will say, I'll change this. Right, because that's what our whole and sole purpose is to modify files and then commit it so that others can see it, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So now next step is let's say you want to make some changes here. So I'll say, okay, uh, new changes by Akash in the second attempt, maybe oh, let's write some simple text. New changes by Akash, that's it. Right? Uh, and then I thought, okay, uh, Oops, sorry. Then I thought, okay, I made some changes here. I will save it. Uh, how about let's create another file, right? So I'll go and create another file. I'll create another file. I'll say uh, new file. Okay, and I'll add some value here. I'll say uh, new value, whatever. And then, oh, 
and then I click on this and then click on save, right? So what I've done, I have added a new file and then I have modified the existing file, right? Now, when I do a uh, git status, I see two things, right? Both in red because both the things have been identified as changed. So when you see something in red, that means something has been changed, right? But there will be two segments here. So one is changes not staged for commit and it's saying this is the file which has been changed. And then it will say there is one untracked files. There are two categories here. So I'm going to explain these two categories uh, now. So when something is coming here, which is changes not staged for commit, this means this file is already present in the Git repository and something has been changed here. Matlab ye pehle se hai aur is pehle se file mein change hua hai, right? Pehle se kaha hai? Here, yaha pe. This file is already here and something has been changed. That will come here. Changes not staged for commit. Okay. Now, the next section is untracked files. Now, this is how Git is telling us, but ek aisi file bhi hai, jo yahan nahi hai, aur wohi mujhe yahan local pe dikri hai. Those files, it will tag it as untracked files. That means these files are untracked. It is not there in the repository. It is. It has been added for the first time. Right? Now, it will ask you what you want to do. Do you want to add both the files or you want to add only one file or how you want to do it, right? So let's say in this case, I want to add both the files. So what I'll do, I'll run a command. I have two options. I'll say git add. I will copy the name of these files and paste it here and enter. So it will add those files. Or I can, if I'm confident that whatever changes I'm seeing in red are eligible or deserve to be checked in, then I will simply say git add dot. That means add all the red files, all the red entities, add everything. This is a risky uh, command because it will try whatever you have, whatever garbage you have in the folder, everything will be added to be committed. So exercise this only when you feel this deserves all the files that you have there deserves to be checked in. Okay. So when I do git status now, what will happen? Everything will come in the green status. So those two files are coming are in the green status. This is the first step. What is the next step? By the way, you don't have to do that git init and all the git remote add every time. These are one time settings. Now your, your synchronization is done. Next step is that- Sir, sir one question. Yeah, yeah. If I add, add means I want to add only one file that is new file.txt. Mm -hmm. So uh, should I write git add? new file only or uh, should i mention the um, extension also that dot okay, txt okay, okay let's let's do that so you have to enter the extension as well you need to enter the full file so i'll simply say okay. new file again okay and i will okay. say whatever i'll push here i will close this save i'll say get status again Right, so I have two green, one red. That means I can do git add dot. It will add everything, whatever is pending, or I will say git new file again dot text. Okay, and I'll then say git status. It will show me everything in green. Yes. Okay. 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 Cool. Now next is I will say I will say uh, git commit. Because this is the next step, git commit m. m here means message. I'll say uh, my second commit message and then I'll enter. Then I'll say git push origin means my URL. So this URL which you see here is my origin. It's You can understand it, it as a variable, okay? So whatever this path is, is saved inside this origin. And then I have to mention the branch as well. I'll talk about branch in, in a while, but you have to mention in what branch your repository needs to go. Sorry, your changes needs to go. So I'll say git push origin master. It will ask me the same process. And I will just put my password. And the moment I, let's see here. Okay, it has pushed in. 
then the moment I refresh this, I will see my changes. And this is the message. Remember, there's a message I put there and I'm going to see this here. Okay. All right, so far any doubts? Because this is pretty basic stuff. I think all of you might be doing this. Few of you who are new, for example, Amrita just joined today, that's fine for her. But few of you might be facing some difficulty here. So if you have any questions for now, you can ask. So what is the first question? Yeah. Yes, yes, carry on. Okay. Uh, sir, what is the difference between push and commit? So is it like commit a saves on local machine and push saves uh, pushes to the uh, directory online? Uh, yeah, that's precisely what it is. Uh, let me show you a diagram also. I have a diagram for you to explain just this. So I'll go here and you go here. And we have the we have the first screenshot here, right? This one, Git workflow. So this is your working directory, right? Working directory represents uh, this folder. Whatever, wherever you have dot .git, uh, .git uh, hidden folder, that is actually your working directory. Then this is your staging. That is when you commit, when you add something, when you current the command git add which is this git add, it comes to the staging, right? Then you do a git commit, then it goes to your local repository. So local repository actually resides inside .git folder itself. You can understand it this way. So the idea is if you want to push something from working directly to the remote repository, which actually represents your whole repository on the GitHub, you have to go through three steps. One is add, then commit, and then push. Okay, uh, so just an, another example. So I, if I go here, I will make some changes, right? So I'll come here, I will say, make some changes. I'll click on save. Uh, then I'll go here, I'll say git status. I will say some, something has changed. I'll say git uh, add dot. I will say git status, it will come in green. Then I'll say git commit. M, some changes. By the way, this this should be very meaningful meaningful description. Comment should be very meaningful meaningful representing what changes you have made. And that's it. So the moment I do this git commit, it's everything in my local still. There's nothing nothing has been gone. Nothing has been uh, pushed to the repository. It's still my in my local. But I can choose to continue working without pushing it. So I can say, okay, uh, I have committed it. That my that is my changes are now saved. Then I'll say, okay, I will go and make another change somewhere here. And then I'll save it. You see, I have not pushed anything. It is still in my local. And it's again, I made some changes. So I'll say git status. It is showing me some new file has been changed. I'll do the same step, git add dot, let's say git commit m new changes. I'll say git status nothing is coming. That means now I have made it made two commits. So I have two commits already, but not both the commits are still in my local. Okay, so I'm still here. So I made changes, I made some change, I added and committed, it went to my local repository, nothing has been pushed in the remote repository. Then I again created added something. Uh, I made some changes did a git add did a git commit. It again went to the local repository. So in my local repository for now, I have two commits, two different files, which has been changed. And I have two commits there. That means uh, whatever changes I made, it has been saved in my local repository. So my local repository is actually acting as a repository itself, which is saving my changes, one change after another. Okay. And the moment I do a git push origin, and master, the moment I run this, whatever commits I have in my local repository will then go to the remote repository. So for now, in this example, I have two commits. You've seen me doing two commits in different files, two different changes, and every change I have committed. And committed means commit to the local repository, not to the remote repository. So commit always means that you're doing something to the local repository. Push actually means that you have pushed the commits to the remote repository. So these four blocks you need to understand. You need to understand how this Git, this is the, um, you know, uh, Atma of Git. 
this is the soul of git uh, how git works so git has these three building blocks working directory staging local repository remote repository remote repository represents github url where your code is present a centralized system local repository represents something in your a repository uh, nonetheless but inside your uh, folder itself something which is represented by this let's say this git folder this actually acts as your local repository uh, when you do git add it goes to staging when you do a git commit it goes to the local repository but it's if you until unless you do git push it will not go here so you can keep on making changes you can keep on committing them one after another uh, but it will still be in your local and the moment you do a git push whatever stack you have of all the commits will then go to the remote repository so you'll see i will go here and i'll run the git push origin master it will ask me again i'll come here enter the details now it will push both the commits which i have made earlier okay so i had two commits it has it has pushed those two commits in the remote repository so i'll go here just to show you so now i have four commits previously it was two commits i have four commits i can go and click here as well so you see i have some changes new change these are i did i pushed in the single push statement so i may i committed something this one which has this code then this one this has has this code and they are new different commits and whatever changes i made actually are be, have become part of this repository okay uh now this brings me to the next next thing which uh, is uh, what are these these commits right uh, because you have seen this so if you want to trace as i in the beginning i was talking about some version control system right uh, where we have different versions of the code so these are these these are these versions i am always talking about the so whenever you do a push or a commit rather not i should not should not say push whenever you do a commit that commit in is assigned a id it's a sha sha id people also call it a digest a sha algorithm is executed and gives it gives you a irreversible string and that string is this this is just as in you can understand it is an id a unique id associated with this specific commit so right now you are at, at this commit and somehow you feel okay i made these two mistakes i want to roll back i want to come back to my previous commit then you can use this id use this id to go back to the previous commit and restore the changes uh, or roll back the mistakes which you have made so each commit each change you make actually represents and is represented by an id so this is this id and this is how you going to, you can get this id how, however this is a short form and the id actually is a, is a quite big so if i if you want to you can also see it in in, in a local uh, system i can do a git log and it gives me all the changes it has made right it's telling me this is the full id github id so you see you only see b06c4 like this uh, 4f but actually it's it's a, it's a big string this is how this is uh, what the full sha unique id for that specific commit so this actually this each commit actually represents a snapshot uh, you know uh, so how to put it so whenever you do something whatever is your current state whenever you do a commit at that current state it will take a snapshot something like ek picture le leta hai wo sari files ki right when you do git commit wo us moment pe jo bhi aapka status quo hai jo bhi situation hai aapki files ki jo bhi file ke andar content hai uska ek samajh lo ek photo khinch leta hai wo okay and that photo or snapshot is identified by that is assigned a id a unique id that is called as sha id sha id or digest right it has different names digest sha id or unique id or version number you can give it any name but this represents a snapshot in a specific time duration or a specific time in the past so that when you want to go back you can actually go back to that specific snapshot of the of the code and correct the mistakes if you want if you want to make some mistake or want to correct some mistakes or you want to make some some errors and you want to roll back okay uh i'm not expecting everything to be crystal clear okay so even if you guys are not getting exactly what i'm trying to explain here still fine if you're getting 10% of it i'm still happy 
if you're getting 1%, I'm still happy. Okay, because these things are not very natural and it takes time. So don't be too anxious if you're not getting it 100%. But I'm hoping at least if you can get at least 50, 60%, I, it's a win-win for me. Uh, if you're getting only 10%, I mean, I'm okay with it as well, you know. Um, but that means you have to uh, practice it harder. If you're getting 50, 60%, it means you have already practiced it and you have few doubts and you are uh, confused about it, but now their doubts are getting solved one after another, right? Uh, right Sir, so, I have one question. Yeah, yeah, carry on. Sir, if I'm working on Eclipse, so the same procedure, no? For right, so, pulling uh, the... I was... Yeah, I, I'm going to type. That's my next next uh, topic, actually. So let me let okay. me show you how and this works in the Eclipse. Okay. And another question is, what is dot md? The long form of dot md. That md, right? So it is just a text file. It is. It has no not much significance when it comes to the code. It is used to generate a page like structure. So you see whatever you whatever you are seeing here right now is written in the read me dot md. So this is just how GitHub, this is a GitHub specific syntax. You, you write code here. So you see when you see all the uh, documentation I create for you guys, right? Uh, for example, JUnit Selenium framework. So this documentation, which you see here is actually, I have written inside dot readme file. And if you want to read this, you can actually click here. And this is how I write it. This is a text file. So it is a nothing but a simple text file with some different extensions so that uh, the uh, the GitHub understands it and parses it so that it looks nice. That's it. Right. This is how I write it. Nothing else. This is just for uh, readme actually is used for uh, or explaining the concepts of sorry, explaining what is present in this repository and what this repository is all about. You know, whenever you have a software, you have a readme file, right? So here we have readme.md syntax, which we use and we write some documentation there, which looks like this. So I've written in a textual format, but it looks something like this. We have some different uh, coded content here. Some screenshots also you can apply. Okay. okay. All right, so uh, let's move on to the next thing here, which is, so right now I'm talking uh, about uh, uh, you know, how a specific structure of Git really looks like. Now, let me show you how all this works in a code environment, because right now I've been, all I've been doing is to just show you uh, some commands and uh, that too only in a text files, right? Uh, let me show you how, how you, re let's say you want to create a new project and you want to push those, that project inside of repository, how to do that. Let, let me do that quickly. Uh, so I'll not use this version now. Sorry, I'll not use this Windows platform now. I'll just move on to my uh, Mac because the basics I have already covered. Um, so you will have Windows. Uh, it will just look similar to what I'm going to show next. Uh, so no, there will not, will not be any confusion, I hope. But still, if you face, feel something is not adding up, you can ask. I'll talk, I'll explain that in the Windows context. Uh, right, so let's say I want to create a new repository. Uh, and I want to add a code there, right? Uh, let me go back here. So you do the same process again. You go and create a new, uh, you'll say uh, new Java, Java project, new, delete it. I'm, de I'm marking it delete so that I know that I have to delete it later. I don't want to have junk repositories. Uh, then next step is once you do this, it's fine. You can now choose to have this or this and doesn't matter. I mean, as I said, these are just text files. Uh, you can edit it. You can create it later. Uh, I, if you're, I didn't add this because I wanted to show you that Git can, can have some commands if you don't add it, uh, because the view, which you saw, uh, if you select this, it will not show you some commands that me, it, it assumes that you already know the concept It will not show you. So those commands. So it's really man not man mandatory to have this. Uh, usually you can choose to have this like this. You can have a Java GitHub Git file here, right? Let me uh, take this option. Okay, so I'll say Git ignore. I'll say create repository. So it will have, you see it right now, I don't have any, any suggestions here because now Git as you have assumes that you know it, know you know Git. Uh, so I have this git ignore file. If I open it, I'll see some code here. 
something like this. That means it Git has to ignore these kind of files. So whenever we have a dot class file, dot jar file, dot war file, you it should not be added. This is how I'm instructing the Git local client not to add these files when I run Git add or Git status. It will not even show me these files because the have the purpose of having a version control system is to safe keep your source code, not the compiled code or not the log files, not the war files. These are compiled code war files and all those all these things these are actually compiled code github is not supposed to be used for compiled code or binaries these are also called as binaries so your files github repository should not have any binaries and that's the reason i always talk to you guys when i when i always raise this these issues and concerns when i say why did you add target folder because target folder contains uh, the binaries the compiled code you should not have compiled code in the repositories. Okay, so this class file, even log files is not necessary. You should not put it. Only the source code you should have in, in the repository. Now, let me uh, do the same step. So I'll now we'll be using uh, the Mac system. Okay, so what you do is you create a folder and uh, it's as I said, it's a good practice to use the same name, right? So I'm going to use the same name uh, here. Some special characters, maybe. Oops. Never mind. So I have my new folder here. Then I'll right click and click on new terminal folder. What you will do in this case, in your case, you will use git bash. Use git bash here. I'm using this. And then the same thing, I will say git status. Nothing will be there. I'll say git in it. Something will come here. Okay. So I'll say git status again. That means now it is uh, initialized, right? Then I'll say git remote add origin and then the name of the repository, which is this. Sorry, the URL of the repository. And make sure you're not copying this. You have to copy this, which ends with dot git. Right, so I'll copy this. Then to a uh, git status, just to make sure everything is fine. I'll say git status. It's fine. Uh, right now, my this is empty. Nothing is there. So I need to create a project here. So I'll use my IDE here. I will say file. I'll say file new project. And then I click on May one. Uh, this is an IDE, IDEA, I mean, IntelliJ, uh, but the same steps will be there for Eclipse, right? So don't worry uh, if, you do, if you see something different. So if you're going to use uh, Eclipse, the same steps uh, you will see there, but you make sure that in the location part, there also will be a location. So there you will go and select the, uh, this folder package and you point it to the folder here. Right, so I'll point it to this folder. I'll click on open, and uh, the name will also be the same, right? And here you can choose to because there you will find group ID, artifact ID. You can choose to put it that way. Click on finish. Uh, mm -mm, this window. Right, the moment I do this, uh, the moment I do this, I will see a project being created here something like this. Okay. And then I'll come here. I'll say git status. So now I'm seeing there are new files being added. Uh, there is one IML file, one dot idea file, and then I have a form dot XML. Okay. If I do a git status, I'll see that I am in a master branch, right? And I have these files to be added. Now the idea is you should not be adding these things there because this doesn't is not your source code. These are just IntelliJ specific files. When if you're using Eclipse, it would have something called as prefs or dot settings and all those things. So that is where your dot git ignore files comes into picture. So what you will do is you have to modify your git ignore file. Now, unfortunately, when I created this branch, it was a main branch. 
right? By default, it creates a main branch. But I don't want a main branch. I want a master branch. So I'm going to do everything. I'm going to do everything in my master branch. And my master branch, as of now, I don't have a git ignore file. So I'm going to create a git ignore file. The way I do this in Mac is using nano dot git ignore. You can use your text editor to do this. Oops. So I'll say nano like this, git ignore. And here it's empty. And I would like to have some values here. So I'll just copy paste this. Paste, uh, right? And then I will save this. So don't worry if you're not getting what I'm doing. Uh, this is a .git ignore file. You can create it uh, in using text editor and you can place these values there, all these values there. Uh, let me do a git status here quickly again. Uh, I have a new file here and I have this idea and I have this. I just don't want these two files to be dis even displayed to me because I don't want to add these files. So this is where you'll modify the git ignore file again, right? So I'll say dot git ignore, git ignore, and I will add those folder names here. I'll say I don't want to have dot idea and I don't have to have, don't need, don't want to have dot, any file which is ending with dot IML. And when I do git status now, it will not show me. So git ignore is used for ignoring the files which you don't want to add. Okay. Uh, now my git ignore file is also fine. I'll say git status, sorry. So I'll say git add and I can safely use git add, add dot. By the way, there is one more special syntax. It's called as git add hyphen i. That means I want to interactively do it. Let me just quickly show that. So here I have the option to, uh, uh, you know, update. I mean, don't get confused with this if you're not uh, very familiar with how to do this. It's fine. I am just quickly showing you. Uh, so I want to do what? Uh, add untracked. So I'll say four. I'll say one. I'll say two. That's it. And I'll say seven. Quit when I say git status. It will add it. Okay. Uh, don't worry about this. If you're not getting what this is, you can go to a video and check it later and try to do this. This is just another way of interactively adding many files. If you have right now, I have only two. It's fine. If I have, let's say 15, 20 files, uh, this, this option comes handy. Git add hyphen I. That means interactively, I want to add files. Otherwise, you can simply do git add dot. It's still fine. So I'll say git status. Then I'll say git commit hyphen M adding files and then I'll say git push origin origin represents what which I've added that means it represents the URL and then I'll say git push origin and I want to push it these changes into the master and that would be it the moment I do this my project is now part of the repository how will I check it just go there and right now I am in the main branch so you will not see anything if I go to the master branch this is where my code is you see, I have my code here. Now, what if I want to add a new file here? So I'll go create a new file. Uh, let's say Java class. My first Java class. Click on add. And that's it. And I, by the way, I can also do it from Eclipse or any IntelliJ, but uh, I'm just showing you this now. So I'll say, I mean, you should use git command line for better practice because good developers only use this. Uh, but doesn't mean that bad developers use this. I mean, if you're well familiar with the git concept, you can choose to do it from here as well. So again, I'll say git status. Uh, one for change here and uh, one. Oh, okay. I have added from here. So git uh, this this uh, IntelliJ actually have added uh, this file already and then I modified it. Uh, so some confusion here. So don't worry. Uh, let me just. Uh, do a git sorry git add quickly git add dot git commit new file this usually will not happen because it's showing in the track committed as well as uh, not stage this will not happen with you the git this idea intellij actually does it uh, automatically that's why you're seeing this otherwise this file should have because i have created it for the first time it will only should have shown here uh, now i'll do git push origin master and that would be it so i'll go back here and you will see that 
in the master the file has been added inside the respective folder because you see i have added this inside a folder structure source test java here it is not showing main java because there's no file so it doesn't add empty folders it only add files so i have a file here right now my default branch is when i click on code my default branch actually is main marked as default and i want to go and change this i can go to settings i can go to arpit nigam is doing something on my screen you're doing something arpit never mind i'll go to branches and i select here master and click on update so this will change the default branch to master like this here uh guys uh, i think the meeting is again going to get uh, end